Welcome to the summit. Thanks for stopping by today. Hi, I'm Joey McWilliams from MidwestSports.net. Glad that you are here with me today. And we are joined on the summit today by the commissioner of the American Rivers Conference, Commissioner Chuck Urigan. And Commissioner, I, I don't want to bury the lead. I want to go right into this, and, and I'll bring this up on the screen so that you can see it, although I know you're familiar with this release. It came out on the RollRivers.com website a few days ago, and it talks about the fact that the ARC President's Council announces hopeful return for athletics this fall. And so that makes me smile because I want to talk about sports. I want to see sports. And, you know, with a release like that, then you're saying there's at least a possibility. Yeah, absolutely. Um, first of all, thanks, Joey, for having me today. Yeah, the uh, you know we we felt like a lot of people needed to smile, and um, you know when we are we wanted to show that we are committed and that we're working behind the scenes to you know to try and make sure that everything's in place for our student athletes and coaches and fans and everyone to uh, you know to welcome at you know athletics back to our campuses because it's uh, it's a very important part of what we do. It's a very important part, frankly, of enrollment. And, um, and we just, you know, we're just hoping that um, this virus that's been all over the place, it's, um, you know, and the information comes out daily on the best ways to fight it and, you know, and what the numbers are and all that stuff. And we're just, you know, so we're sort of at the mercy of all of that information. But in the meantime, you know, we are looking towards what we can be doing, um, you know, to make sure that if we do get back and, um, we sure are hopeful that we can do it, that uh, we have everything in place. So that's that's really our, mo our main focus right now. Well, I, I am glad to hear that. And without going full Pollyanna, I mean, I, I definitely want to look at things from a positive perspective as, as, as much as I can. I, it's come up this week, as a matter of fact, that the Division II uh, President's Council approved recommendations from the Management Council about reduction in maximum and minimum numbers of contests to be played for the 2020-2021 season, just that season alone. Have you heard anything about Division Three similar, or do you do you think anything like that may happen? Well, a, a survey went out to the full Division Three uh, membership last week asking some of these questions, that, um, and, and it was really prompted by what Division Two had been thinking about now for a couple of weeks and um, came to closure, I guess that was yesterday, um, so yes, we are as a division. We are starting to look at some of these, uh, some of the things that uh, Division Two has done. Um, you know, I think that the feedback that we've gotten from our own people with regard to the maximum number of contests and reductions there is, we have no idea what our schedules are going to look like as it is. So I don't know why. Um, I personally don't know why Division Two has taken a step towards contest reductions when I would say the chances are. 50-50 at best, and probably uh, more 70-30, 80-20, that schools are going to have to cancel competitions as it is. And so why, I don't think that it's really necessary for us to be taking a proactive step to reduce the number of contests right now when there's a lot to be decided about non-conference competition. The minimums, uh, you know, I think that certainly has some merit just because, again, we don't know what our schedules are going to look like. We don't know if we're going to be able to get to those minimums. And so I think that, you know, the, the opportunity to reduce the contest minimums and still allow you to check the box that you've officially sponsored that sport for a year, that does make some sense. Um, the, you know, the question again becomes, you know, what, uh, if, if you're, I think the, the question on, on, on that part of the, the equation is, do, does a reduction in contest minimums, um, you know, make it easier for the NCAA to manage all of this? Because if you have a, a lower number that you think you can reach, then you don't have to ask for a waiver from the NCAA and the NCAA doesn't have to consider a blanket waiver like they had to do for the spring sports that got canceled. So um, contest minimums, I think, uh, you know, we're on board with that. Um, certainly in our conference, I, I think the, the survey reflects uh, results. We've seen the, the preliminary results, and I think the survey results reflect, um, you know, real uh, favoring of the kind of the reduction in the contest minimums. The contest maximums are a little different. Um, I think there are, I think that the results maybe have been, may have been uh, slightly in the majority for reducing contests, um, but that there's still 
uh, a lot of uh, question about whether that's a step we should be taking right now. I understand. I understand that, and and you're right. A, a lot of a lot of decisions like that still to be made. And as you mentioned before, we we get new information pretty much all the time. You know that that even goes back to uh, to March 12th, and that's that's a day that I think I'll remember pretty much forever as broadcasting sports and trying to keep up the sports news. And and I'll go ahead and I'll lead into my next question with that because on that day. You know, March 11th was the the day that the NBA shut things down with the Oklahoma City and Utah Jazz game, and then all the dominoes started falling after that with the NCAA and and so many sources going back and forth. The news changed literally not just by the hour, but by the half hour and quarter hour as to what was going to take place. You know, as, as to how that relates to to you and and specifically to the American Rivers Conference. I mean, it's been a good year, I would say, on the whole. And I want to give you a chance to address that, but. My goodness, wrestling alone, and I know the conference excels in wrestling, and, and you all had 20 that were getting ready to compete on the national level. You had a slew of All-Americans. I, You know, uh, Loris just comes away with a, a regional championship. Coach Miller gets named Coach of the Year, D3Wrestle.com. I mean, you have a lot going on, and then, bam, it just all came to a screeching halt. Talk about uh, how this affected the conference from the wrestling standpoint first. Yeah, well, we were uh, we, we've um, f- we've been fortunate enough to earn the hosting uh, duties for NCA wrestling for two of the next four years. Um, so we were we were all you know it seemed like as that week went on, things were starting to get a little dicey. But we we're sitting in the U.S. Cellular Center, you know, prepping for first round matches on at ten o'clock on Friday, and. It was pretty apparent early in early in the day that um, the NCAA representative who was with us uh, was saying things sort of in code that made me think, uh, "Hey, we're we're in trouble here." Um, so um, you know, we're we're just we just got to have our heads down and trying to you know plan as if we're going to be wrestling that following day, and then bam, the the news comes out. Uh, it was probably mid afternoon or late afternoon, and. You know, the um, it was kind of surreal because we had to make an announcement. There were wrestlers out on the mat practicing um, and warming up, and we had to make an announcement that you know that this had come down. And I'd say you know there might have been fifty to sixty wrestlers in there. Most of the guys had already been through with their workout sessions earlier in the day. But um, to say that that was an emotional time um, would be a, a pretty big understatement. We just. Yeah. It was, you know, the reactions were, you know, blank stares to, um, I remember one individual who was sort of down on all fours with his head buried in the mat for probably 15 or 20 minutes. Um, so, you know, we, we, you know, we, we, we come to that, we come to that conclusion. Um, you know, there's some things to manage there. Then we, you know, then we get to our conference business and the following day we had a conference call of our, of our presidents and we were sort of proposing at that time to maybe consider trying to salvage something out of the spring season. Um, and, you know, at, at the, at the end of the day, what won the, what won the, the issue at that point was, you know, there were already probably 12 to 15 conferences that have, that have decided to shut it down. Um, our people were looking at, you know, practice protocols and all the things that would have to be developed on a very short term, uh, short timeline to get things, you know, really in, in place for those spring sport athletes. Right. And so, um, you know, we made the very difficult decision to shut everything down as well. I mean, you know, clearly uh, foresight in that case was 2020 because everybody else did that in the neck over the course of the next week to 10 days to two weeks. Um, we also had uh, Loris women's basketball at the time was uh, had made it to the Sweet 16 of the NCAA championship, and so um, you know that the the disappointment um, you know from the denial, if you will, of opportunities for those young men and women. Uh, NCAA track and field was supposed to start that same day, and we had a number of um, you know entries in that and, and uh, individuals that it, that figured to do very well. So it was, um, it was, it was bad. It was, uh, you know, probably the most difficult thing that I've been involved in in my um, career in athletic administration, um, and uh, you know, just cut short what would have been a real, I think, icing on the cake type of end to the winter season, 
And then, you know, we, we've always been very good in softball, have, you know, have traditionally had two to three softball teams advance to NCAA play. Um, we were fortunate to get uh, two baseball teams in um, a couple of years ago, just, just the, uh, last spring. So, um, yeah, it was what, what could have been, um, you know, a really exceptional year for us um, was, you know, ground to a halt by um, this thing called the coronavirus and uh, something that unfortunately we'll never forget. Um, but, you know, also, you know, add, added a little perspective to life too, um, you know, I think for, for a lot of people. Um, but, you know, the sadness, I think, was is was and and still is the overwhelming feeling you get from looking back to those early days in March. And that seems like it seems like so long ago, I guess, at this point with um, the amount of time that's gone by. Well, it really, really does. It, 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 like it was yeah, yesterday, yesterday from, from some perspective, perspective and another, another year, like, like, like 10 years. years. But uh, anyway, we're speaking now with Commissioner Chuck Jurgen from the American Rivers Conference. And Commissioner, you, uh, your conference, by the way, is, is a conference that's nearing its 100th season. I know that'll be a time of celebration in the very near future. But you've also rebranded within the last couple of years as well. Which, by the way, on a side note, I think you have one of the coolest logos out there. I really do. I really like the logo and what you can do with it sports specific as well. I just think that's incredibly cool. So so props to you all and, and your graphics department for getting that done. But talk about the rebranding for a moment and, and what that's meant for your conference. Yeah, well, I mean, I think we started down this road um, when we decided to admit Nebraska Wesleyan a couple of years back. And, um, you know, our, our previous name, uh, the Iowa Intercollegiate Athletic Conference, um, you know, uh, with a school in Nebraska, it, uh, I think it made people think, well, you know, is this really, is this really how we should be branding ourselves? And, um, you know, I, I would say that, uh, you know, at the time and maybe even with some people, I, you know, I, I think there's still some people who wish we had held on to the Iowa name. Um, you know, I think in it, it uh, as far as a brand is concerned, I think the group that I felt the, probably the, uh, probably felt the most uh, compassion for would have been the wrestling coaches because when you think Iowa, you think wrestling. And so when you, when you compete under an Iowa intercollegiate athletic conference and that sport is wrestling um, you know, I think that's got a really special connection to the state that um, you know, maybe some of our other sports don't have, but you know uh, we got a lot of the comments like, well, the big 10 doesn't have 10 schools and, um, you know, and, and this, you know, this conference doesn't exactly, you know, it doesn't exactly fit with, with their name. And, um, our president's just decided that this was the time for a rebranding and, um, we are very happy. Uh, we work with a, a, a design company back on the East coast, uh, sky, sky Dillon, um, is, uh, is the, is the pri is the, um, primary in the company. It's sky design studios. And, um, he was, he, he was just wonderful to work with. We had a, a nice group of people, a cross section of our athletic and academic folks who helped us throughout the process. And I'm, I'm really, um, really happy to hear you say that you like the art because we were, we were really excited about it when we finally got to a point where, um, you know, colors started, you know, you, you start out with all of this pencil, you know, kind of hand drawn stuff. And then, you know, he works his magic with his team of designers. And, you know, when you finally see something with the colors all set in it, we were like, this is, this is really cool. And yeah, we were, we've been able to do the, you know, the sports specific logos, every school has its own um, uh, school color specific logo that they can use. Uh, we try to limit it, um, limit what they can use it on, but you know, things like their gym floors where they want to have, you know, something, if it's Wartburg and their colors are orange and black, they want their, you know, they want the floor to be their own piece of art. And so, uh, we allow them to put an orange and black version of our logo on their floor, but um, it was a, it was an interesting process. Um, certainly, like, like I said, um, we had some we had some resistance for sure, uh, but you know we feel like we've you know we've got something that's really good um, allows us to be a little bit more nimble going forward with maybe considering other schools outside of our borders if uh, if anybody wants to come into the conference and. Um, just feel about just feel good about the whole process, and certainly the final product we feel is uh, is is really eye catching and um, something that that our student athletes could get excited about as well. Well, I, well, I, 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 I want to say, say I really, I really, I really, I really like, like 
Well, and, well, and, and, and we've learned in the past 15 to 20 years that conference realignment is always a possibility. So uh, yeah. it's definitely something that, that yeah. we could see. But uh, Commissioner, one last question then, and, and I, I would say this, all things being equal, and we know right now all things are not equal. They're just not. But, you know, without the even with the perspective of, of the uh, all that's going on in the world around us and specifically the sports world now, coming into the next year and the next couple of years, how do you see the growth of the conference? It, it does seem to be on the right track. And, I, and again, I commend you all for that. Yeah, I, I think we're, you know, we, we feel really good about our nine members. We think the Nebraska Wesleyan addition was, uh, you know, was really a, a, a good one for us. They fit completely into, you know, the, the overall profile of our schools. Um, you know, they won a national championship in men's basketball a couple of years ago, which um, doesn't hurt um, from a from a uh, from a publicity or from a uh, from from a, a, a knowledge standpoint for, you know, when you have a when you bring in a school and a couple of years later, they win a national championship in men's basketball. That's, I think that's just good commissioning. I think that really is just, a, you know, just, a, just good commissioning, but yeah, we, um, our, I think our presidents are very receptive to the idea of expansion. Um, you know, that you can't just wave the magic wand there and, and, you know, pull schools, uh, out of, out of thin air to come and join your conference. But, um, you know, the, the NCAA magic number for automatic qualification is seven. Um, you have to have seven schools to uh, to to have an automatic qualifier in those team sports where that is available to you. Um, and so, you know, we have nine, which we feel like is a good safety net. You know, would would some more, you know, would adding some more members would that give us give people a little more comfort if somebody decided that you know for whatever reason they felt like um, you know the American Rivers Conference wasn't the home for them anymore? Then sure, um, it also would you know maybe allow us to you know get into some divisional play. And ease um, some travel, um, and particularly midweek travel where our athletes are missing class. Um, so yeah, we feel like we're we just feel like we're in a very very good position. It's been a conference that um, even before I got here was very prominent regionally um, and nationally. I think we've actually taken steps up with you know Loris Women and Women winning a women's outdoor track and field championship a year ago. Um, you know, teams regularly advancing deep into NCAA tournaments in sports like men's and women's soccer, basketball. Um, you know, our football uh, programs have been very solid. Um, you know, if, since I've been here, we've had, you know, teams advance to the final eight in the Division III, um, in the Division Three championship. So, and we're doing that in an area of the country where, you know, we're also, because the, the way the NCAA tournaments start out, you're starting out with regional competition mostly. Um, and so when you're looking at, at conferences around us, like the CCIW, the WIAC, the MIAC, I mean, these are some of the better, you know, better conferences when you have a St. Thomas or a Whitewater football or, a, you know, North Central football won the national championship this past year. You know, we have to, we have to play those teams to get to, you know, get through the, the bracket and advance. And so, you know, we're, we're already competing against regionally um, some of the best schools in Division Three, And for us to be able to accomplish what we what we can't what we do um, is a tribute to our administrations, our, you know, the leadership on campus um, and mostly uh, to the coaches and the student athletes who make the commitment to come to our schools. I understand. Well, if if I have one thing I can definitely take away from this today, I've I've learned a new verb, and that's commissioning. So I may have to uh, may have to use that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, in the future, yeah. and and possibly I'll give you credit at least at the first, and uh, then after that it might be turned into something that I always say. So yeah, and, well, you know, it's it's I, you know, I, I, clear, clearly I, clearly I'm the reason that that Nebraska Wesleyan won the won the NCAA Division Three men's basketball championships. I got here. I think it's I think it's you know pretty much clear in everybody's mind that I was the guy that made it happen. <laughs> So. I, I definitely think so. And I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm sure all the folks in Lincoln agree, and exactly. uh, that uh, that's the case. Well, I do think you're doing some good commissioning along the way. And <laughs> Thank I, you. Think the, I, I think the conference is definitely in good hands. Listen, I'm excited about the hopeful 
uh, hopefulness of return for the fall. And we will continue to follow this and, and continue to uh, talk about what's going on, not only in the American Rivers Conference, but uh, throughout in, in small college sports. Commissioner Chuck Jurgen, thank you so much for taking time with us today on the summit. We'd sure like to get to visit with you again sometime. I really, really appreciate it, Joey. And uh, thanks for all the good work you're doing in, uh, in the region and, and publicizing um, all of us. So thanks for the time today. All right. God bless you all. Thanks for watching today. Please be sure and like and, subs and, like and share and subscribe to this channel, Midwest Sportsnet. We appreciate it. God bless you again. Have a great day.